minimum mastery of the engineering knowledge, there is no compromise. Right? The minimum mastery of the engineering knowledge is always there. Right. Let's uh, move to the program educational objectives. Sorry, the program outcomes or Washington the Court graduate attributes, which I put it as WA. Uh, nothing to do with the picture there, right? So sometimes uh, you may actually see as if that is a vast desert, right? Uh, what this is all about, uh, we don't even understand sometimes, or we do not want to understand. But these are the 12 that I actually compressed them. And the one that is colored uh, pinkish a bit, right? Uh, those are the seven, uh, in fact, seven outcomes. And these seven outcomes all mentioned in the complex problem, right? It says that if you talk about engineering knowledge, it should be solving complex problem. If you talk about problem analysis, it should be solving complex problem. Design and development also solving complex problem. Investigation, the use of modern tools, engineers in society, and the environment and sustainability. So all those are part and parcel of the requirements to solve complex problem, right? So if a person attains those outcomes, that means to say the level of understanding that he has or ability that he has is actually through the context of solving complex problem, right? It is not just any problem. It must be at that level. So what happens to the rest? The one in, in green, it says about communication on complex engineering activities. So not just any activities, not just any engineering activities, it is complex engineering activities, right? So what happened to the other four? Never mentioned anything about complex problem, right? Ethics, individual and teamwork, finance, and lifelong learning. There's no mention, right? So if it is no mention about complex problem, can you do complex problem in there? Yes, you can, but it's not necessary, right? Under this particular outcomes. So let's look at the, the first one here. This is engineering knowledge, breadth and depth, right? It says here, solution to the solution. That means whatever knowledge you have, you're going to use it to solve complex engineering problem. And if you look at the next one, problem analysis, again, the word complex is there. It says that using first principle. You know, if someone that you ask them to actually use, a, let's say, a code. Yes, industry requires codes. Right? Code of practices. Uh, but if they cannot go beyond codes, there's something wrong with the graduates. Right? So they should be able to go to the first principles, basically. Uh, design. Again, complex problem. It's not just any design. It must be a complex engineering design that we talk about. Where here, you need to also integrate components that such thing as public health, safety, cultural, societal, and so on. Now, it's making it, the breath is making it complex as well. So when you have a lot of consideration, it's making it complex. That's what this outcome is trying to say as well. On investigation, I remember when we first time went for Washington the court, they always asked us, where are your open-ended laboratories? You know, the labs that we do? Where are the open-ended? So we, we were puzzled at the time. What do you mean by open-ended? Because we are so used to a structured kind of labs, step by steps, everything is probably given on the plate. And that's what many of us are actually practicing. Now, open-ended means you can have many solutions, isn't it? So you have to think. You have to find out what is actually the best. Uh, that you can actually derive from in those laboratories. So that, that shift happens in Malaysia, but it was difficult because we were not used to it in those days, right? But at that time, the word complex was not there yet. But we were already being asked, where are your open-ended, right? And the modern tools, 
again, you have to familiarize your students with. We are not saying that you have to make sure that you have all the industries, software and so on, but they are able to use those IT tools and modern tools in, as part of their study at the university, right? Modeling is one of them, right? If you can actually go and move into this direction, you know that the future we talk about with IR, Industrial Revolution 4.0 and so on, this becomes very useful, right? Now moving on, engineers in society, again this is about informed by contextual knowledge to assess society, health, safety and so on, again to solve complex problems. Do you see the similarity with the other one on design just now? Because the breath is actually now there, right? So the more context you put in, the more complex it becomes, right? And that's, I mean, if you have only two parameters, it's easy. When you have five or six parameters, it makes it more difficult when you have to integrate them. Environment and sustainability. And again, in this particular case, the impact of professional engineering works to the solution of complex engineering problems. Now, I just wanted to explain those bits. It's not meant for you to actually learn about everything today, uh, but you could actually go through the rest of them. I just wanted to highlight the complex problem of the 12 graduate attributes of the Washington Accord. Right? Uh, you'll have your time to actually read all this later on. Uh, okay, the knowledge profile, we've seen yesterday that you need to make sure all the eight of them there. Eight, remember, even from, for engineering technology, there are eight, right? That's for senior court. But for Dublin court, there's only seven. They don't have to do research. They are not expected of to do research. That's what it is. So this is what the knowledge profile talks about, theory-based science. So we check our curriculum. Do we have these natural sciences in ours? Why do we need them? Mathematics, conceptual mathematics, theory-based engineering fundamentals, specialist knowledge, which we are actually familiar with. But how much of it have we ever analyzed our curriculum? Right? And Washington Accord never tells you how much it should be. Right? because it depends on your niche eventually, right? Where, how much that you want to actually move forward. So there's no one size fits all here. So it is non-prescriptive, right? Washington Accord is very non-prescriptive in this particular area. All right, uh, so you have the four years. And imagine the WK stands for the, do you remember what was WK? Knowledge profile, K stands for knowledge, right? So how many of them? You see, a bad lecturer will always ask the question and he answer, answers himself. Eh? Like me, I'm a bad lecturer, so I ask question and I answer it. A good lecturer, if someone asks him a question, he will then deflect that question to another person. That's a good lecturer, right? So I'm a poor lecturer, that's why I ask question and I answer myself. Eh? Never give solutions to your students. You have to make them think to get that solutions, right? You can bring them to the solutions. But today, because time is so limited, I have to be a bad lecturer today, right? Uh, so all those four knowledge profiles, there are about eight knowledge profiles, but the first four knowledge profiles, they are all related to the first two graduate attributes, which is engineering knowledge and problem analysis, if you see them, right? And that's what is being specified in the exemplars of Washington Accord. Now, if you look at the other knowledge profile, it links up to the graduate attributes of design. Engineering practice, it's modern tools. When it comes to engineering in society, it's actually all those three graduate attributes. And when it comes to research, the literature usually is under investigation, that's under um, investigation related to research literature. Now, we know that there are 12 program outcomes, right? How many of them are there now? You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where are the four hidden? They could actually be anywhere in the knowledge profile. That's what it means. So you have that four missing, 
but they could be actually distributed within all those knowledge profiles that we talk about, the eight, right? And that's how you need to interpret this Washington Accord graduate attributes to the knowledge profile, okay? So, yeah, Arabs are very good at giving us a, a huge feast, right? It's a complex problem to finish it. <laughs> huh? Maybe the solution is if you don't finish, you pack it né? and distribute to the needies. Uh, that's one solution. There could be many solutions to it. Right? But we want students to think about all these solutions, really, rather than giving them the solutions, right? But this is a camera trick. Yeah? <laughs> uh, right. So complex problem solving. Um, most of the time, complex problem solving is always done by the psychologists. Because psychology is an area which, you know, I mean, it could be many decisions coming out from all sorts of directions, right? Because that's what psychology is. Uh, but engineering is not as complex as that, right? That's why you don't find many people writing books about complex problems. Because mostly they are being solved, right? Uh, but psychologists, there are many things that are still unsolved. So they need to write them to make sure that there are some guidelines to it. So complex problem, if you need to think about complex problem, let's see the bigger picture of it, right? If you see the word difficult, can it be a difficult decision to be made? You know, if you made one decision here, it's going to affect the cost, let's say. It's a difficult decision. Are you going to affect the cost? Or is it going to affect the environment? That's a difficult decision for you to make, right? But you have to make a decision. Where are the compromises that you need to do? Uncertainties, uncertain strategy. If you take a wrong strategy, you're not going to reach the destination, right? Maybe a better or shorter, faster, depending on your strategy. Confusing ideas. When you have so many ideas, whose ideas are actually correct? So those are things that you would like to inculcate in your students, basically. Uh, introducing something that makes it complex, so that they it's the thinking that we want them to have, right? It's the higher order thinking, right? Always reflect, think, coming up with a better solutions. Contentious product is another intractable change. But this one never happens at the university. It happens in real life, right? If something falls down, right, collapses, you cannot retract back, isn't it? I mean, a failure has happened and death may have occurred. You cannot go back. It, you cannot retract back. So that's, those are things what we would have considered as complex. So how can you prevent that from happening from the beginning, right? Because if a change happens, you cannot go back. And that's, of course, it doesn't really happen. You have to simulate in classroom. That's about all. Um, I would like just to give you this concept about complex problem here is that the scientific or technical problems, if you do combine them, they can be complex, right? Scientific or technical problems. Now, have a look here. Uh, if you do not know the function, right? If you do not know the function, that's the question mark there. It is complex, isn't it, for you to arrive at the function, right? Whereas when you combine some of these, it becomes more complex. And if you have all of them, it becomes even more complex. But if you look at the technical thing, the, the, most of the time you find that the, the functions are already there, right? That, that's simple, straightforward, isn't it? But what you need to actually make it complex is to, I didn't show this one, to integrate some of them, right? A few of them. So that makes it complex. So it is how you develop your curriculum, how do you develop the learning outcomes, depends on the capability of the students as well. But remember, there must be the minimum standard that you must fulfill. It's not because you have a very poor student in the class, therefore you have to push down your standard so much, right? To an extent that they do not meet the minimum mastery of the 
engineering knowledge. So these are some of the differences which you could read by yourself. And all complex problems require high taxonomy. So don't expect that you, know, you teach your student, please explain, please explain. And all the time they can only explain. But we would expect them to be able to have a higher level discussion. We would expect them to have creation, innovation. Those are the kind of verbs that probably uh, would suit them. And I just have this diagram, as I said to you, integration. I'm finishing this off. Um, I'm not going to explain this, but it is there. It is being animated. I hope you can try to go through them and try to understand what it means by integrating everything and making sure that complex problem is actually being addressed. So that is to solve complex problem. This is something to do with the design course. How do you actually integrate all those in? Right, so in conclusion, you must have a program educational objective. That's what the Washington Court would expect you to have. Program outcomes, knowledge profile, complex problem, and of course, complex engineering activities. And most of the time, complex engineering activities could be deliver, delivered through the pedagogy such as project-based, right? So with that, thank you very much.